Welcome to Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies. Today we are doing a, uh, a dive into one of the projects that we're going to be honoring this year at our Engineering Excellence Awards Program. And it's a project from Stantec called the Bridging Kentucky Program. And look, when you dive into this a little bit more, it's a little interesting because it's not just one project, but it is a bunch of projects. And when we talk about infrastructure investment and replacing structurally deficient bridges, uh, this is a really a project that's a standout. And you'll hear soon why it's going to be honored at the awards program. And I'm very pleased to be joined by Wendy Harper with Stantec. Uh, to talk about this project. And Wendy, uh, if you can introduce yourself to your, to the audience and, and kind of what you do at Stantec, and let's go into this project because it's it's really something significant for not only the state of Kentucky, but I think for a lot of states around the country to look at maybe as a, a model to deal with. I mean, as a Pennsylvanian myself, our state is known as a as a state full of structurally deficient bridges. So this is, this is something that might be a, a new model for the country. Yeah. yeah, sure. Um, I am a, a practice leader for structures in the Lexington, Kentucky office, and I, I lead the the bridge team here in the in the Lexington office. And the bridging Kentucky program really started just you know the the cabinet was seeing that um, that the number of structures that needed repair was just increasing faster than funding could keep up. That needed. Uh, you know, smaller rural bridges in Kentucky that needed rehabilitated. No, I was going to say about 369 bridges, I think, in the program. We did. Well, the the uh, we this program started with screening over 1,200 bridges in the state. Um, and ultimately, um, you know, the, the first thing we did was look at the ones that we, through that screening process, could see were most critical, um, that we could, we had an easy real rehabilitation that we could move quickly into design. And really this program, the programmatic approach for, for, uh, of the program allowed us to move move from that screening process through to construction in 18 months, which compared to the typical four years required under the normal design bid build project. That's amazing. That's, I mean, that's a, that's a really short time. And a lot of these bridges aren't, uh, you do have some large bridges that are, you know, that, that cross major spans, but a lot of these are your smaller bridges that go over, um, you know, more of a, of a, not rural routes, but, you know, neighborhood routes or, or surface roads that, that have to, um, that have to be bridged with uh, creeks or, or what have you, but they're critical to yeah. communities because if they go out, it, it, you completely break um, the ability for people to move around communities. Um, you know, what was kind of the, the breakdown? It was the only, you know, a lot of those were the only access to to that uh, small road or, or a single home. Yeah. That when when those, those um, you know, a lot of them were maybe open, but were weight restricted so that school buses couldn't cross or emergency vehicles couldn't cross. So, you know, one of the the things that, that, that kind of echoes what you just said. And it kind of is a is a is a mantra with the firm when it comes to design with communities in mind. You know, I mean, how did that ethos that 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 kind of play into uh, the evaluation of the bridges and and how the project was going to be implemented? Well, we were able to you know, focus on these bridges that allowed um, residents to reconnect to reconnect with services, as I mentioned. Um, and with their communities. Um, one of the amazing things that came out of this um, program was, you know, in August, uh, July of 2022, uh, Eastern Kentucky, I'm sorry, Eastern Kentucky had some devastating flooding. And the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet had this program in place and had this team in place with engineers that have been working together for four years on Kentucky bridges. And so they were able to immediately call us into action. And, you know, we, we had um, people on the, in the field as soon as water receded, you know, within 24 hours of the cabinet calling us. Um, and we could start immediately working with contractors and getting materials ordered to get those temporary access back in place. And this team had 25 of the 32 emergency bridges replaced within five months, which was just an amazing, amazing feat for this, for this team. Wendy, one of the things that, you know, when you're looking at so many bridges and, and dealing with so many projects within this program, you know, you 
you did mention some some you know innovations in, in the way that you kind of um, the procedures uh, that you put into to, to addressing this project. Can you go a little bit more into uh, uh, you know how the firm approached this? Yeah, sure. So with that screening process that we used, we were able to identify um, projects that were geographically close together so that we could bundle them. Um, into under one construction contract. And that really helped through the whole process because the field staff was able to go out and do multiple site visits at a time. Um, We were able to collaborate with government agencies and do some of the environmental uh, reports on multiple projects. So they were focused on a, a geography or a certain ecology versus Every, you know, each single bridge having a separate report. And that was really a win-win for us and for the agencies because um, they, they had, you know, a, um, one report versus, you know, a hundred to review. And it also allowed us to um, bundle multiple bridges to let under one contract. So it maximized the contractor's productivity because, you know, they could uh, move equipment quickly from place to, from location to location. Um, and well, just, you know, that bundling and, and really this process, we were able to reduce the bridge cost by 42 percent. Um, and we did. Um, we improved in, in the um, in four years of the program, 369 bridges in 99 counties. Of That's I, that that really is amazing. Um, and especially the savings. I mean, just the, 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 the efficiencies that you were able to create. Um that's truly, that's truly something because everybody looks at how are we going to tackle this problem from a national perspective? We have so many bridges that are that that need help. Uh, they're either you know structurally deficient, weight limited, or what have you. And how do you attack something like this so large? And it seems like you kind of cracked the code, at least for Kentucky, that that creating a program that you were able to to create a process to kind of uh, go through all the potential fixes. Do it in such a way where it was geographically advantageous. They were able to do it from contracting and then reduce the costs and create efficiencies. It seems as though um, you know it's it's a major win for for the state of Kentucky. Yeah, and it's a, it's a legacy that'll that'll leave on. Um, you know, we developed a statewide bridge delivery guidance manual that'll still be used on um, bridges in the future. And, um, you know, I hope we hope that it'll be adopted by other DOTs. Yeah, absolutely. This is the kind of, this is exactly the kind of thing that hopefully is replicated across the states. And if anybody from DOT, it's uh, US DOT that's listening and watching this program, keep in mind, I mean, this is, this is the stuff that, uh, that really is, is exemplified in, um, the awards program that we have, of course, the Engineering Excellence Awards program, because we look at not just the quality and the 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 I guess the technical aspects of, of the project itself, but the scale and scope and community and social impact. And when you're talking about over 300 bridges that have been improved that connect communities and make sure that mobility continues, this is a massive community and social impact and social value project that that really should be uh, should be showcased. So. Um, you know, one bridge in particular, I think the U.S. 60 Spotsville Bridge. Um, tell us what was unique about that project and, and, and how it kind of fit in. Sure. Um, that one, it, was, it was really special to us because it's not typical for bridge, bridge engineers to lead the public engagement process. And this one was definitely a welcome exception. Um, it was just a beautiful story about engineers working within their community and, and understanding their needs And the community was involved through the entire process, Um, you know, and the existing bridge was definitely a landmark in their community, but they had a sense of pride in that new structure because they were so involved um, in the development of it. And and how is that going to lead to the new bridge, um, to more economic opportunities uh, for the community it serves? This this bridge is in um, Western Kentucky, over the uh, it takes U.S. 60 over the Green River, and um, agriculture is really a primary um, employment opportunity in that area. And the existing structure was only 20 feet wide, and so they um, the farmers who were uh, you know going across that bridge multiple times a day could not were not able to uh, pass tractors or combines on the bridge because it just wasn't wide enough. Um, and so. You know, that was one of the things that we really identified and talked with the community about, about what specific uh, equipment that they wanted to have on that bridge. And we were able to 
um, you know, have a more have a greater horizontal and vertical clearances than standard to allow for for those types of equipment. Um, and and in, di in addition to that, um, the this is also just downstream from the a, a lock and dam. And so as barge traffic was coming out of the lock, um, when our team was on the ground and, and kind of watching what was going on there in the existing structure, as the barges were going around the bend, they were kind of swinging out towards the, the existing piers that were in the water, in the channel. And so with the new structure, we were able to put the piers outside of the water and really um, improve the safety and efficiency of the barge traffic going, going through the channel. Wow. So in, in the process of design, you were actually able to fix two issues. Uh, yeah, not just, I mean, you, you know, it, 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 you really, that's an important thing. I think that agriculture, you know, getting products, getting crops to market, you know, is essential. And having a bridge that allows it to be done safely is critical. But then also the other safety part of, of, of realizing that, you know, you can actually create a, a safer environment for, for barge traffic. That's a win-win. That's like two birds, one stone. Um, you know, how many times has that happened in the, in a project? Yeah. We we try to have it as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that that I mean, it seems like this was a was a home run. I mean, from from start to finish, from community, from to the firm. I mean, I imagine this is this is going to leave an impression with with you and your team. I mean, how how did this uh, you know how how how's this kind of. Uh, um, looked at by the, the team over at Stantec on, on, on getting this done? You know, it, it really heightened our awareness of, of our role in the community and the role that engineers play um, and what improving infrastructure does for the community. Um, and this one, you know, the community was so engaged here. They had their own Facebook page. Uh, and so that they were posting, you know, as construction was taking place through, uh, you know, day by day and, and adding commentary. Um, and one of the most heartwarming stories of this is that um, um, a, a Spotsville native named Irma Day was actually uh, one of two children chosen when the original bridge opened almost 90 years ago to cut the ribbon. And we were able to bring her back to cut the ribbon when the new bridge opened um, in August of 2022. So that was really special. Um, yep. And it was, it was a bit of melancholy, you know, cause the bridge is such a big part of that community, but, um, they were just, it just, they were so excited to have this new, safer, modern bridge. Yo, Wendy, uh, can you go into a little bit more about, uh, the Spotsville Trust and how that played into, into all this? Sure. So we, um, used a, a modernized Warren Trust of selected. Um, it was to, for the client's goals really to be economical and, and constructible, but the community also wanted a bridge that looked similar to the existing bridge that was out there. And so this, the, the trust used a um, rigid frame design for lateral loads. So it eliminated the sway bracing, um, which made it faster con to construct, but also helped with that, the vertical clearance issues that I mentioned earlier. Um, we also eliminated the vertical members, which really gave it a, a light airy feeling that the, the community really liked. And it was constructed, you know, right beside the existing trust. So the community got to watch it uh, being being built um, day by day and, and note, see the scale and the difference in the two bridges, which they really enjoyed as well. It really is a beautiful bridge. I mean, it does have that airy quality to your point and, and it has having that beautiful vertical kind of clearance. And it, it does really, you know, it, it, it fits into the environment extremely well as well. And, and, and the fact that the, some of the images that we'll you know, put up on the screen, you know, and, and, and when we when we finish out the podcast, it kind of shows, you know, how, how it's, you know, being put put right next to, like you said, the existing bridge. So it's a it's it, it really is something, um, you know, Wendy, this is a, a congratulations, number one on the project. I think it's, you know, it's fantastic. And to look forward to uh, to having it honored uh, at our Engineering Excellence Awards uh, program in June. Uh, hopefully, you'll be there to uh, be great, fantastic. Uh, we have a red carpet. I hope you come down the red carpet. We can we can talk about it a little bit more with the project team. But it's a time to celebrate, especially uh, uh, celebrate excellence in engineering like this. So, Wendy Harper, Stantec, thank you so much for being part of the program today. Thank you for having me. And again, this has been Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies, and we'll see you next time.